What is up, survivors? Today we're talking about mantis taming. How to tame the praying mantis and all the cool stuff that it can do. You typically see these guys in the scorched earth area. We're over here at Ragnarok, right on the edge of the desert, which is pretty accurate where these guys are usually at. They're usually out in the wild in packs. You can tame them passively. We'll talk about how to tame them, and they have a lot of cool abilities. Now, with a recent arc update, they actually are breedable as long as a couple of other insects as well. So you can breed these guys now, which is really cool for trying to get mutations and transferring stats and all that. That's a really awesome little addition that got added onto this guy. But the Mantis has a lot of other tricks up its sleeves too. Um, mobility, it's not terribly slow. It's definitely not, a f not, it's not super fast, it's not super slow, so it's got that going for it. You have a regular attack, which you, as you can see, I have a weapons in its hand, which is pretty awesome. And you have this lunge attack as well, which gives you the option to cover some ground too. Um, no jump with this guy. This lunge is a basically your jump, but it's kind of a straightforward thing. It's not going to go up and down for you. While we're on the subject, you can actually equip melee weapons onto the mantis not just weapons so if you want to do weapons you can for better boost and damage but you can also use tools the mantis can actually use tools you can grab any sort of primitive tools and hand them to this dude and he'll harvest the resources for you which is a pretty cool concept now you gotta watch it typically because mantis this is a 150 coming out of 225 and you can see where the weight is still only 300 so the weight isn't terribly good on these guys so that part you do want to be careful of it's not it's going to be really, really, really easy to fill these guys up. So if you're using them for a resource harvesting critter, if that's your general idea, I would highly suggest uh, maxing out its weight as much as you can. And the nice thing with being able to breed these guys is you could crossbreed between uh, different wild creature stats. If they have a better weight, you can try to breed through them that way. And then you can also try to hope for some mutations as well in that category. And an imprint bonus on top of that. So you can get them to a pretty decent carry weight, but you just got to watch that. It's kind of a weird concept to being able to harvest just about anything because you can give them tools. But the problem is, is that they can't carry a whole lot. You can give them multiple tools. You can give them different weapons. You can give them the pike. Interesting enough, you can actually give them the clubs. So you get high level clubs. These guys can actually knock stuff out for you. They're definitely sort of a multi-purpose animal. Now, the idea of being able to ha have all your different um, uh, your tools on this guy mean that it can pretty much harvest anything that you can. Anything anything because you can give it picks you can give it hatchets you can give it sickles you can give it anything so it's just going to pick that stuff up so that's definitely probably one of the most one of the more universal harvesters as far as being able to pick everything up and again the backfall to this is obviously not being able to carry much but this guy definitely shines they definitely have a lot of cool features um especially being able to be breedable now makes these insect most insects in arc uh, a lot better now the idea of being able to do that not super better but definitely better uh, being able to breed these guys will also help you out with gaining some things. So if you need a chitin farm, you can breed these and, you know, it's kind of a morbid way of looking at it. But you could sacrifice the offspring for some chitin. They also provide organic polymer when you kill them. So if you have a breeding pair of these guys, you could essentially have an organic polymer farm. You don't have to worry about spending all that cementing paste. Anywho, let's talk about how to tame these guys. All right, so we got a mantis hanging out out here. The trick to this is that you are going to need bug repellent. You're going to want to make bug repellent. We'll talk about where to make that at real quick. Now, I have GCM on so that I can pull this up so you guys can see it, but typically you're going to make this on a mortar and pestle or on a chemistry station. You're going to need citronol, narcotics, pelt, and a little bit of rock carrot in order to make these. You're going to need bug repellent. It's going to be mandatory. You're not going to be able to get around this. Now, sometimes you can get away with using ghillie armor, but it's not that easy. Bug repellent is unlocked at level 16, so you can actually get it fairly early on, but you're going to need crops, so definitely pay attention to that. Anyway, as I have the bug repellent going on, if you notice there's a timer ticking down telling me when this bug repellent is about to go away. Now, if you're dealing with mantis in a group, I would highly suggest taking out all the ones that you don't want to tame, and you're going to need to sneak up on one of these. Now, you don't want to touch this guy. If you touch it, it's going to get mad. You want to stick right by it to walk up to it. And we are going to have to use death worm horns to passively tame this thing, which is absolutely obnoxious, but that's what you're going to need. How do you get death worm horns? You well, you got to kill death worms. They're each going to give you a horn a piece. If you kill an alpha death worm, you're going to get, a, you're definitely going to get more, but you're going to need these to passively tame these guys. It's the only way without mods that you're going to be able to tame it. And as you can see, you just sneak up behind it, feed it the death worm horn. And because we're dealing with some low levels on this server, it was just a one feed, but typically this could take three or four, sometimes even five times to actually tame. But the trick is 
have bug repellent, even wear ghillie if you have the option just to double up on it. And don't touch the mantis when you're sneaking up on it. Don't touch it. If you touch it, it's all going to be bad. Mantis, the mantis saddle is required to ride these guys. You're going to unlock that at level 45 and you do actually simply craft it on your person. Pretty simple. Just fiber hide and a little bit of metal and you got yourself Oh god. And you got yourself a tamed mantis that wild mantis don't like. We were friends a minute ago, and now they're mad. All right. That's pretty much it. Again, you can now breed these guys, so you definitely have that option. And you can still harvest a little bit of stuff without having any tools in them. Um, you still pick up a little bit of fiber, and they'll still do damage for you. So you definitely have that option, too. But that's pretty much it. I think that this creature is incredibly versatile and the option to be able to breed these insects make these incredibly better. I used to like them before, but the idea of having to kill deathworms to get the deathworm horns to tame these guys was a little, took me a little far back. I didn't really necessarily like that idea. The other problem with these is the, the inability, the, the very low weight, like they're a perfect resource harvesting critter, but with the very low weight, it makes it really difficult to actually make them worth it to harvest some of the higher end resources, even though they'd be incredible at doing so. If they had some sort of weight reduction to the resources, perhaps I'd feel a little bit differently, but it's definitely a little bit more difficult. But with the ability to breed these guys now, you can now look at mutations, imprint bonuses, all that good stuff to make these guys a bit more effective in that field. Plus, if you get a high level one, I think you're going to have to be picky. If you're going to take the time to tame one of these guys, I would highly suggest taming a high level one. Don't settle for a lower level one because I think you're going to be a little bit disappointed with its performance. They do a lot of damage, they do have a lunge attack, plus the ability to just find an awesome sword or an awesome pike makes some really good tanky warriors on top of it. And they also have a saddle, so an upgraded saddle with some better armor making them a bit more resilient. These are definitely, and again, you can look at the stats on this guy, and this is only a level 20, and again, weight's not very high, health is pretty bad, stamina's eh. So these these are going to be able to pump out a lot of damage for you, but they're not going to be able to take it very much. Almost kind of like the Raptor, very glass cannony sort of creature. So you're going to have to back this up with a really good saddle if you want to take these guys in any significant fight. Um, and again, the option to be able to breed these guys and have a constant farm of organic polymer and chitin is incredibly useful. They are insects, so they'll just eat spoiled meat or any sort of meat afterwards. Um, you don't actually have to sit there and continuously feed them deathworm horns, thankfully, because that would be an incredibly expensive tame to keep. All in all, I got to say, I really like these guys. For the much damage as they do, I think they're really worth it. Um, really, it's the versatility. The versatility to just do whatever I needed to do to harvest whatever I needed to harvest at any point in time makes them really worth it. I can overlook the 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 hurt the the hit to the to the weight distribution because of that as far as insects go i'd have to say this is probably one of my favorites and as far as resource gathering dinos go it's actually really high up there again i can't stress enough that the weight isn't really that great but there's a lot of resources out there that don't necessarily weigh very much that you're going to have to harvest a lot of things like your you know your typical thatch and fiber and even flint things like that that don't necessarily weigh a lot but that you need a lot of i think this tame is perfect for something like that if you can manage to get the weight really high up i would say definitely go for harvesting other stuff um but if you're looking for a good metal harvester a good stone harvester things like that i think those slots are definitely occupied by something like an ankylosaurus or, or doodicurus anywho that's the mantis well guys, that's Mantis Taming. Hope you guys liked the video. Hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments. Maybe there's an animal that you guys like to have tamed. Maybe a favorite animal that we haven't done yet. We definitely, I want to go through all the tames. I want to go through every single tame eventually. That's my goal. Feel free to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time.